Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. I'm back upstairs to show you what I like to wear for cold weather fat bike riding in Southern Ontario. I'll also share some of my best performing and best looking clothing pieces. Winter temperatures vary a lot based on where in the world you're located. Even in Canada, temperatures range quite substantially based on which province you're located in. If you're in Quebec, temperatures often dip below minus 35 degrees Celsius. We're here in Southern Ontario in Toronto. Our range is generally say plus five to the coldest days would be minus 17 or minus 18. I'll show you what I like to wear for temperatures ranging from a low of minus 18 degrees Celsius to a high of plus five. If you're cycling in colder climates, you're gonna to have to supplement what I talk about here today or look at even more specific cold weather clothing. In any case, what I'll present here will give you the bare essentials to get you started. I've organized winter clothing into four major categories and we'll review them in this order. First, we start with upper body. Here we're talking about base layers, mid layers, and outer layers. Second is lower body, which is basically legs. Third is extremities, which is hands and feet. And lastly, I'll talk about the head and the neck. Some pieces of cycling clothing I wear all the time, while others only perform well within certain temperature ranges. So I'll use this little thermometer up here and the blue box to show you the temperature range each piece of cycling clothing is best suited for. Okay, let's kick this off with upper body base layers. So base layers are probably the most important piece of clothing because it's a layer that directly touches your skin. And for riding in general, and certainly for winter riding, it's really important that you get any moisture, any sweat away from your skin. Any moisture or sweat that stays on your skin is just gonna make you clammy and really cold. So the purpose of the base layer is to pull that moisture away from your skin, draw it to the outer layers of clothing, and hopefully have that sweat evaporate as you ride. So the choice of material for base layer is probably your most important decision, and everyone has their preference. For spring, summer, and fall riding, I tend to use synthetic antibacterial items. But for winter, because I want some warmth as well with my base layer, I choose wool all the time. It's a natural product and it works fabulously. And the best thing about wool is that it's naturally antibacterial. It's wool, so it keeps you warm. And it also dries quite quickly. And unlike almost every other fabric, even if it's damp, it still can keep you warm. So I always use wool base layers and generally I use this one, which I've had for years. It's a Pearl Izumi, 100% wool, but a, quite a thin base layer, but still provides a decent amount of warmth. But again, I'm not going for maximum warmth here. I'm going for something that's going to sit tightly against my skin and is going to whisk that moisture away from my body. So this one I use for most of my riding in mild to reasonably cold conditions. And then I have this thicker icebreaker wool base layer t-shirt that I wear for colder temperatures. And this I could wear um, anything to minus 18 degrees Celsius or even below would be fine as well. After the base layer, of course, you have the mid layer. And again, choice of material here is personal preference. But for me, for a mid layer, because it's still so close to the skin, I do like to stick with 100% wool um, tops. So I use something like this and similar ones like this. This is one by Rafa, but it's a tight fitting 100% wool uh, mid layer. And it's fairly thick, so it provides quite a bit of warmth just as a single layer and also has the benefit of wool. After the mid layer, of course, you have the outer layer. And here's where you can go in quite a few different directions. For me, for the outer layer, I don't use wool um, because this is the part that is exposed to the outside. So I want something that's a bit more performance related. And I generally 
you know, it's cold weather riding, so if it's precipitating, it's most likely going to be snow, not rain. So I don't look for anything that's waterproof, but generally with some of the synthetics, like this one from Sportful, um, it's generally a polyester or some type of synthetic fabric and provides a bit of water repellency. So I strongly discourage using waterproof clothing anywhere unless it's absolutely necessary. Despite all the marketing claims, waterproof material simply does not breathe as well as non-waterproof. So if you don't need waterproof, don't wear it. Um, key thing to being comfortable winter riding is to not just trap the moisture within your body. And that means for all your layers, making sure they breathe as well as possible. You're gonna be a lot warmer and a lot more comfortable with well ventilated clothing. So this one from Sportful, this is a blue one. I also have a red one. I use this for most of my winter riding. So I'd use this for temperatures ranging from anywhere from a low of, I would say minus 15 to plus five. And at the colder end of the range, I'd probably supplement it with a vest, but generally this suits me well for a pretty broad range of temperatures. For colder temperatures, I go for something a bit thicker for super cold winter riding, something like this. This one's from Cafe de Cycliste, and it looks damn good, I think. And it fits really well. But the main reason I use it for really cold weather is that it is quite a bit thicker. It's still, I think, 100% synthetic materials, um, mainly fleece on the back, and I think possibly some nylon windbreaker material on the front. But I need something with just a bit more um, warmth to it. And this serves me well for temperatures ranging from well below minus 18, I would say, to minus 15 or minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now for any temperatures, anything ranging from plus five to minus 18 or even colder, I either wear or I carry with me a vest. And it can be any windbreaker vest. And I wouldn't go with the most super light windbreaker vest, uh, but you don't have to go with something super heavy as well. Something like this, this one's from Gore. I've had it for 10 or 15 years. It's actually really thin, but this on top of either the two outer layers I just showed you, actually provides a lot more warmth. So the good thing about this is uh, I can either start off and wear it, or I can just put it, pack it into my back pocket and use it as an emergency jacket. So I always carry this regardless of what layer I'm wearing as the outerwear. Now, the second category of clothing is lower body, which is legs. And for the legs, almost all the time, probably 99% of the time, I use these. I use leg warmers and they're reasonably thick. So I don't go with the absolute thickest because I find them a bit too warm and restrictive. A lot of cyclists don't like anything on their legs because it kind of restricts movement. But these are kind of the sweet spot where it gives me sufficient warmth and still gives me good mobility. So these I wear with thermal cycling bibs, which is probably the best piece of winter cycling clothing you don't know about. So I'll talk about those in a moment. But um, yeah, these I like a lot. If it's super cold, then I will go to full thermal tights. Something like these from Jordana. And these are, these go all the way up to the waist. They're worn over bib shorts. And as you can see, the tags are still on. I bought these probably seven years ago. So it shows you how much, how often I actually feel I need something this warm, which is a cycling tight. So, but I do keep it because, you know, if I find myself riding outside Southern Ontario in a really cold climate, um, I probably will need these. So you see that most people for winter riding simply wear uh, thermal tights on top of their cycling shorts. And like I say, I, I do that, but only in the absolute coldest of cold weather. 
up to anything minus 18 degrees Celsius or even below that, I would use the leg warmers with these. These are by Ole, but these are thermal bibs, which I discovered, someone mentioned to me in my cycling club. And these are, they look like, they look like normal summer cycling bibs, but they're not. They are so much warmer. Um, the padding tends to be a bit thicker, but for insulation, um, it comes with thermal material. Uh, so fleece on the inside. And these, in my opinion, are just as warm as most cycling tights. But the benefit is pairing these with the leg warmers. And for me, first, I think it looks better. But second, I find I have better mobility in my legs. I think separating your shorts from what's covering your legs just gives you better range of motion. So I find I'm more comfortable when I'm cycling with just these and my um, leg warmers underneath them. The third category is extremities, basically the hands and the feet, which are the areas of the body that really kind of suffer the most in cold weather riding. Um, the wind really kind of gets to them and drives them into being numb and cold. And because they're just far away from the core of your body, they're just prone to get core. So a lot of people have a lot of problem keeping their hands and feet warm. And really your choice of what to use will depend on how easily you get cold. And there's a lot of variation amongst different people. I find I'm okay. My hands and feet don't get cold that easily. Um, but I know some people just have less issues than I do. So I'm kind of in the middle of the road in this area. When it comes to hands, uh, I know mitts and claws um, just keep your hands warmer. But for uh, winter riding and fat biking, fat bikes are pretty, pretty heavy and you're maneuvering them around. I just like my hands to have a good amount of movement. And the thing is that the bigger glove you go with or mitt or claw, the less uh, ability you have to really control your brakes well. And quite frankly, I find the thicker glove or mitt I use, the more my, my fingers get tired. So I don't use something warmer than I need. And I get by for the temperatures I ride in with two pairs of gloves. For cold weather, really cold weather, <clears throat> I'd say anything from say minus eight degrees Celsius to minus 18 Celsius. I use, what I found is one of the best performing gloves on the market. And I've tried a lot, experimented a lot, and some just don't work that well. So these are from Castelli. They have a zipper, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about um, you know, tearing your other clothes apart with Velcro when you throw it into the wash. And it's pretty good. I'd say minus eight to minus 10 or 12. I'll just wear these against my skin. But if it's minus 12 to minus 18 or minus 20, then I slide a few of these into the gloves, which are hand warmers, and those are great. And often I'll start off with hand warmers and then take them out and then um, just wear the gloves, which works just fine. For more mild winter riding, say from plus five degrees Celsius to, I'd say minus seven or minus eight, I like using these gloves from Castelli. Again, I've tried a lot of gloves. These I like a lot because the material is very soft and flexible. So it's really easy to grab the handlebars and brake levers with these. So if I can get away with using these, I will. And often I'll wear these and supplement them with a hand warmer and kind of use them in pretty cold winter riding conditions. Now for the feet. Again, another challenging area and really difficult to know what to use. I like these winter cycling shoes from Northwave. And they're good because they have just one dial to tighten and loosen. Obviously you don't want to be fiddling with too much when you got gloves on and you're in the cold. So I find that useful. Uh, I like that this goes pretty high on the ankle to give you a lot of protection. 
and it's waterproof and none of these performance related cycling boots or shoes are super warm but these do the job but these I always supplement with a shoe cover and here's one example this is from DHB and it's a, a thick neoprene shoe cover with a bit of velcro and a zipper and they come in different sizes and they slip over your cycling shoes so I always pair these with this your feet can't be too warm so it just gives you another layer of warmth and the benefit is it keeps your cycling shoes clean and dry which is important so I pair these two together and this because it's quite a thick cycling shoe cover uh, works in pretty cold weather so this is fine for I would say minus 5 degrees Celsius to minus 18 even minus 20 degrees Celsius again if it's paired with either hand warmers which is a small variety or you can get boot warmers as well and what I'll do is I'll put these between the cycling shoe and the cover which is an easy place to slip them in and it gives me enough warmth to keep my toes and my feet warm in general so that works quite well for cold weather riding and for more mild winter riding I use something like this which again is a cycling shoe cover but this one is really thin and stretchy and provides minimal insulation at all so it's very thin but the advantage to this is again I just find that it just keeps the shoes clean so it's a good idea to throw this on top it'll keep them clean and more importantly it's waterproof or water resistant so you definitely don't want snow melting on your feet and getting them wet so this is essential even for more mild riding and um, you know easy to clean easy to clean easy to wash and uh, relatively inexpensive so another thing really important in addition to the cycling shoes and the shoe covers is a really good pair of socks and any winter cycling socks will do just find one that is reasonably thick which can sometimes be hard to find and will give you a good amount of warmth so this is not a place to go cheap on get a good pair of winter cycling sock I like these a lot from 45 North and they're known for producing some pretty good super warm winter clothing I gave them a shot and they work out well now we're on to the last category number four which is the head and the neck so let's start with the neck and these things which are great for cycling and a lot of outdoor activities hiking um, is super important I find so it's a buff and this one is really quite thin so um, which is good for more mild winter riding so for temperatures ranging from I'd say plus 5 to I don't know minus 8 minus 10 I'd want something thin like this for a buff um, too thick and I find you feel like you're suffocating and you overheat um, really you want a buff to hold in some of the heat but also to block the wind so you can pull it up over your face over your mouth and um, provide some protection that way so that's good for most of my winter riding maybe a bit more on the mild to moderately cold temperature if it gets colder I just go to uh, a different buff so this one um, even though it's you know still relatively compact it is quite a bit thicker and is a lot warmer so this I'll only wear for the coldest of cold weather because otherwise I find uh, I will overheat when, uh, once I'm you know half an hour or an hour into my ride if you want to be comfortable winter riding you have to have something on your head you have to keep your head warm otherwise it'll be almost impossible to keep the rest of your body warm your body's going to want to protect this thing so if it's too cold 
your whole body is going to be cold as well. So get yourself a skull cap and get yourself a variety of skull caps. This is one I get have from Jordana and I like it for almost all of my winter riding from mild temperatures of plus five degrees Celsius to anything down to I would say minus seven or eight degrees Celsius. So it's, it's relatively thin so a helmet fits on on top and keeps me warm, blocks the wind, but doesn't keep me too warm so that my head starts to sweat. I always like to have my ears covered so it has covers for the ears as well. So that's great for most of my winter riding. If it gets super cold, I'll choose a different skull cap. This one from Segoy. As you can see, the label's coming off. So this one I've had for quite a long time, but it is quite a bit thicker. So it does provide a lot more warmth to the head. Um, so I'll use this in really cold riding conditions and um, it's really important for those super cold days. And that's it. That's a complete rundown for what I wear for cold weather fat bike riding in Southern Ontario. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please pass them along. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. It allows me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.